Vi går vidare i programmet som sagt och nu ska vi lyssna på något som är väldigt typiskt för det här området i Ideon. Vi ska lyssna på hälsovård. Vi har Newberry Pharmaceuticals på plats. Välkommen Lars. Kör igång. Många tack. I'll do this in English, although I'm Danish, but uh, my English is better than my Swedish. So thank you very much for tuning in today to listen to Newberry Pharmaceuticals. Um, Newberry Pharmaceuticals is and have an ambition of building a Nordic powerhouse based on being the locally preferred partner that knows the market best. We do that by bringing pharmaceuticals to market that uh, are within treatment areas like oncology, rare diseases, neurology. And my name is uh, Lars Meiner. I have a background from the pharmaceutical industry with plus 25 years of experience in international business. Uh, I've been leading affiliates and businesses in Europe. I've been leading businesses outside of Europe. I've been doing a lot of business development, M&A activities, and been building organizations globally uh, for the past 25 years. Leading Newberry Pharmaceuticals is um, bringing all of that together, and I can really use my knowledge from that. But I'm not alone, and I'll get back to that in a minute. We need a disclaimer. Uh, but uh, more importantly, while this disclaimer is up there, I can say that what I'm going to present today is our business model, our portfolio, and then what a snowman means to Newberry Pharmaceuticals for the future. So that's a cliffhanger. So basically, Newberry Pharmaceuticals is a strong team of what I say industry veterans that have a common vision of building a hybrid pharmaceutical company focused on specialty medicine, prescription drugs, innovation and brands. And I'll get back to that uh, during this presentation, what that entails. We want to be the local champion and alternative partner of choice based on aggressive portfolio growth, M&A activities and strong sales growth also, translating all of our BD activities into sales activities. We have so far built a strong portfolio of 30 products um, and we'll get back to how that will play out over the next coming years. But we have a strong portfolio with high revenue and margin outlook. So ultimately the goal is to build a Nordic powerhouse, a top hybrid pharmaceutical company. And we're doing that based on a strong team of um, people who bring knowledge, experience and the energy and passion to drive the growth of Newberry Pharmaceuticals. The founder and chairman is Carl Carlson, who built uh, Bluefish Pharma many years ago. Bluefish Pharma today has a sales of around 400 million Swedish kroner. It's represented in a number of countries. Carl Carlson has sold all his shares in Newberry Pharmaceuticals, but is taking the learnings into establishing, uh, sorry, all the shares in, uh, in Bluefish Pharma, and is taking the learnings into Newberry Pharmaceuticals uh, going forward. Besides that, a strong uh, team of uh, Frederick doing sales and marketing, Andrea doing business development, Katarina doing regulatory affairs, and we together, the management team, is bringing a lot of solid experience in driving the business forward. In addition to that, of course, CFO also in place with uh, Christopher. So why invest in Newberry Pharmaceuticals? Basically, we have a strong pipeline with focus on specialty uh, medicine and brands, and I'll get back to why that is important later. We are rapidly scaling up for commercial launch of our products and expect to see sales growth over the coming years. We have successfully built and shown that we can build a strong pipeline with potential to increase that pipeline going forward. And the portfolio has already started to generate the first sales uh, with the products in the market. So step by step, we are growing the business and uh, that is what we will see also during this presentation. So ultimately, that should create value for shareholders with future increase uh, based on future reported sales figures and business development activities. The business model we are running is a very selective one where we have chosen to focus on the late stage of the value chain. We focus solely on regulatory affairs, 
pricing and reimbursement, and commercialization of the products. So we rely heavily on partners that can produce, document, develop products, and then we can analyze those with a focus on the Nordics uh, for the time being. And that's where we so get today have around five partners that have supplied us with products out of the 30 products that we have uh, this far in licensed. And that is a platform that can be grown. And that is the ambition also going forward to grow that platform with strategic partners as well as more products. The products that we are looking to in license is, as I said before, prescription medicine. It is within the range of specialty medicine or own brands. Specialty medicine, why specialty medicine? Specialty medicine is characterized by being complex diseases, complex um, treatment algorithms, and complex products, often for chronic, chronic diseases or rare diseases, and often difficult to produce. And that gives also an advantage in when we are bringing products to market where we see less competition if there are difficult to produce products. Specialty medicine also make up around two thirds of the global spend of medicine today. So if we go 10 years back, specialty medicine accounted for one third of the spending, whereas today it is two thirds of the spending. So this is also an area where there's been a lot of innovation and thereby also a lot of opportunities for companies like Newbury to go in and compete with originators and uh, bring affordable medicine to market. Own brands can be products that have an advantage, be it a better dosing form, a better um, posology, um, improvements compared to existing medicines, and then we will be branding those uh, products. And the commercialization strategy or the go-to-market strategy will differ for the two brands. The specialty medicine, which is uh, comparable to an originator, will go into tender business and be exchangeable, requiring less sales and marketing activities, whereas own brands will require investments in marketing and thereby um, higher, also higher pricing points. And that's why we have a hybrid where we can balance the both um, kind of portfolio and thereby also build a balanced portfolio um, with that over time. As I said, we are focusing on oncology, where we have our main share of products today, uh, but also focus on rare diseases, where we can bring uh, innovation to uh, rare uh, diseases, and neurology with a strong focus on multiple sclerosis. The pipeline that we have built is a pipeline of 30 products. Um, majority of those are within the three indications or disease areas that I highlighted before, but we also have other products that have interesting profiles and are um, interesting go-to-market products also, which we'll see later on uh, where we'll deep dive on one of the products here. What's important to say is that the first four products have been registered in the Scandinavian market. The first product has been launched, and what we'll see is that there will be a steady stream of launches over the coming quarters, months, years, um, with the pipeline being rolled out in line with loss of exclusivity or opportunities arising in the market. We are continuously screening for new opportunities and will have an ambition of building an even stronger pipeline going forward, um, adding products to, um, to this uh, 30, strong, 30 product strong uh, pipeline. One of the products that we are aiming to launch is um, uh, tetoglutite Newberry, which is a very rare opportunity for a, product, a company like Newberry, where we will have access to launching this product in uh, Scandinavia or the Nordics and competing with the originator that is currently on the market. It's a rare disease, short bowel, uh, bowel syndrome, um, which is characterized by fewer patients, but also very high pricing points, and hopefully also less competition once we get to market, because we uh, believe that this is one of the examples of a difficult to produce product where we can have a um, benefit and a 
strategic advantage in the market, bringing this product to, um, to uh, society. Another product that we aim to launch is uh, Lyroglutide. Lyroglutide is for treatment of um, type 2 diabetes, uh, currently marketed by Novo Nordisk. And here we are launching into what we call a uh, launching a competitive product into a blockbuster segment. Um, this is um, a high treatment area in terms of patients, but also a very high um, cost to society in terms of uh, cost for, for treatment of diabetes too. Um, so here we believe that we can add value to society and certainly also patients in the respect of bringing this pre, uh, product to market um, when uh, opportunities arise for that based on loss of exclusivity from the originator. We also have uh, a number of uh, oncology products and I will not go into details on all of the um, products that we have in terms of oncology products. But here we're building an oncology uh, platform where we can compete in tenders and add uh, benefit to society by uh, being competitive and thereby reduce medicinal spending for society and thereby also free up money for innovation and new products. Um, and we believe that we can uh, have a steady launch of products within the oncology space over the coming years. To me, launching products like tetoglutide, liraglutide, oncology products is a testimony to specialty medicine, but it's also a testimony to um, bringing products to market that has a um, significant impact on patients' lives and are adding value to society in terms of bringing down costs for society. So, as I said in the initial um, presentation here, it's about building a snowman. And what we are doing is that we have built, started building this snowman. We have started by launching the first product in the market. We have more products lined up to, um, to, to be launched. And building that um, snowman requires that you start with a snowball. And this is the snowball effect that we see going forward in terms of launching more products. So grow the snowball to grow the business. That is how we see the business grow. The more products we get to market, the bigger the snowball will get. And as we go on, we aspire to build a very nice, strong snowman. And we will also be able to have a more balanced portfolio with more products, which also allow us to um, balance out opportunities and risk in the portfolio. So the more products we get to market, the more balanced portfolio and the bigger sales we will also generate. In terms of strategy execution, then um, we are right on plan, I would say, in terms of what we have set out to do. We have built the foundation uh, in the respect of having the necessary approvals in place, having robust systems, having the um, team in place to continue to build the business, and we have in-licensed a number of products that can generate sales over the coming years. Now we are in the phase of scaling for growth, and we have launched the uh, first product in the market. We will soon be launching more products, uh, and as we approach 23, 24, more products will be coming to market, and we will see growth uh, from those uh, products coming to market. At the same time, we are looking for new opportunities that could be licensing deals, that could be distribution agreements, that could be M&A opportunities, um, and are starting to build a more specialized, focused uh, commercial team to support the launch of the products that we will see in the future. Later on, we hope to expand further, manage the hyper sales growth that we are going to have, uh, making sure that we stay entrepreneurial and can basically put more products into the platform that we are building, because it is a platform that we are building with the house that we have now, the platform that we have now where we can in-license the number of products and bring those to market. So uh, that will certainly uh, give us an opportunity to further expand. That could be within products, M&A opportunities, or it could be market expansion. But for primary now, focus is on bringing the 30 products that we have on hand out in Scandinavia. 
and then looking for further business development opportunities. In the short term, what is on my desk when I meet uh, Monday morning is basically three areas. Um, we need to secure the, that we are maximizing the commercial value of the products that we are launching. We need to maximize our business development opportunities and we have constantly a lot of dialogue with potential partners where we uh, see opportunities to further expand the business um, and uh, bringing new products, either near term or long term. That can be dependent on the opportunities. And of course, making sure that the organization is fit and able to execute full results, making sure that we have the right competences, the right systems and, and structures in place to support the growth of the commercial launches and to support the uh, business development opportunities. A key part of that is to make sure that we have a regulatory machine that is running to make sure that the products are registered and approved in time so that we can launch as quickly as possible once uh, patents are going out of patent, our products are going out of patent. So in short, we are building a Nordic powerhouse based on a hybrid business model. We have this far shown that we um, have solid achievements in place. We have built the robust systems and a strong pipeline. We have gained the necessary approvals from authorities. Um, and we start seeing the benefit from the many registrations that we have done. We have already four registered products, but 15 lined up in the process of being registered. And we will slowly but surely be launching products as we move on in the coming um, years and, and quarters. We have a strong team in place uh, with a proven track record. We are building towards becoming a Nordic powerhouse uh, with the necessary systems and, and pipeline that already is established. The organization is there and we're open to explore further business development opportunities. The strategy is very clear. Uh, we focus on the later part of the value chain with a focus on prescription medicine within specialty medicine and own brands. Um, and that gives us a very unique position in the market, a unique position where we can attract partnerships from outside, partners that are looking for a partner that is focusing on the Nordics and is not cherry picking on a pan-European um, scale where a, a partner would cherry pick and only go for Germany and Italy and Spain, but actually a partner that is fully focused on the Nordic markets. We have strong partnerships and we rely on partnerships to further grow the business, but we also um, want to expand the number of partnerships as we move on, because we believe that partners uh, can bring um, more value to um, Newbury and thereby also more products and opportunities to market. We are positioned to grow. We have the pipeline in place, we have the organization in place, and potentially over time also opportunity for transformative deals can be done because we have the platform from where we can grow. So um, ultimately, we believe that we can be the local champion and the alternative partner for companies looking to be represented in the Nordics. We strive to have a positive impact in society by bringing products to market that uh, bring benefits to patients, benefits to society, and of course, also strive to have an impact on bringing benefits to shareholders and thereby grow the snowball, grow the business. And we're doing that based on our culture of deep knowledge of the markets an openness and a curiosity to find opportunities in the market and maintaining this entrepreneurial spirit that we have been born with uh, from the beginning. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I hope uh, we'll have good questions. Um, thank you very much for an interesting presentation, uh, Lars. Thank uh, you. And you're a fairly new company. I think the IPO was in February, right? IPO yeah. was in February, yeah. yeah so the so um, company is around plus two years old. Yeah. Um, so um, a, a young organization, yeah. yeah. I want to remind everybody that you can send in questions to us if you, if you want me to ask any questions to Lars. Um, I think I, I start off. Uh, you, you have... 
approximately 30 products, right? Or, or yes. maybe exactly 30 products. How many do you think you will have in, in a few years? Um, that's a good question because uh, we have <laughs> built the portfolio now based on happen to be 30 products. Um, but also the beauty of having a portfolio with 30 products is that now we have a good platform. Yeah. So we don't necessarily need to double up no. because now we have also the luxury of picking and choosing a little bit more selectively in terms of where do we want to go and uh, what are the opportunities and maybe go for some higher bets yeah. uh, instead of having many bets. Um, but I believe that we will have more products. Putting a number, it's difficult because <laughs> ultimately it's about growing the business, growing the snowball. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and, and uh, some um, products may contribute more, whereas others less. So um, the only thing I can say is there will be more. No, I think because uh, you mentioned M&A. &A, yeah. And, and uh, should we expect that you also can divest any products or, or um, do you think you will I mean no, we would, can, we can it go only one way or, <laughs> or <laughs> yeah we are looking to um, if, if it is M&A then we're looking for products that would complement our portfolio our strategy yeah. that yeah. could be branded products that fit into our portfolio branded legacy portfolio which is not nurtured uh, by existing companies where we can give more life to uh, older products and bring those uh, to market. So um, I don't expect that we will see divestments from where we are today, but rather look at opportunities at hand. Yes, to add on. Uh, when, when it comes to your organization, how, 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 uh, how far have you established your organization? I mean, if you look at the, the table, you have quite a lot of launches uh, yep. in the next couple of years. Do you yep. need to strengthen your organization we more? I, I read that you hired a business development manager. We Andreas. recently hired a business development manager. That's correct. And that is basically to strengthen the, um, the, the ambition of growing the business even further with distribution agreements, with more licensing, uh, pro in licensed products. The commercial team will be built as we progress towards the launches which require a commercial team. If you remember okay. the slide yeah. with the tender business yeah. and the marketing uh, part, then the initial products that we're launching is within the tender business, exchangeable business, which doesn't require a commercial team in no. the market. No but more playing on tenders. Whereas when once we get to some of the other products later on, we will need um, a commercial team to support the sales and the uh, products in the market. And that's where we will build the uh, commercial team, okay. but, um, but not uh, imminent. No. So it's like 18 months or, yeah, or yeah, 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 something yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, what, what kind of risks do you see going forward? I mean, you have a lot, quite a lot on your table, as you described, <laughs> when you come in Monday. And, and is it the execution on, on this driving growth? Or, or, um, or what, what, what are your headaches? Uh, to, to so <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I have headaches. <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, things that I look <laughs> towards, of course. Yeah, of um, course, maybe. The... Um, well, on risk side, of course, we are not in control of how um, authorities are approving our products. The beauty is that our products are tested and tried and will get, uh, will get uh, registered. So it's not that we have a risk like many other companies in terms of R&D risk with uh, phase one, phase two, phase three. These are proven products that can be registered yeah. because we are competing against an originator. Yeah. What we're not in control of is the speed of how authorities are working. And we do see differences across Scandinavia in terms of speed. Yeah. Sweden is very fast. Other companies are less fast. Yeah, uh, okay. Other uh, uh, countries are yeah. less uh, quick. Yeah. So that's one of the um, obstacles, you could say. Um, then, of course, competition uh, is always there. <laughs> uh, difficult to predict how competition is, is uh, driving the business forward. Uh, and, and that's the name of the game, that we're competing with other companies. And, and that is something we need to be mindful about, of course. Yes, of course, Lars. Um, uh, when it comes to, to when you present uh, Newberry to, to to different possibilities to 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 inline products, yeah. Um, how is your competition compared to to to, to other players in the market? Do you um, 
the competition is, of course, there in terms of opportunities similar to uh, what we have seen um, in the market. But uh, so far, we have been able, based on our deep knowledge of the market, yeah. our strong <laughs> network that we, the management team and, and, and the board, is bringing to the table, yeah. uh, where we can open up access opportunities. Um, and that is what we are leveraging to build the, uh, the portfolio. Yeah. Um, competition is always there, but what we can offer is the deep, deep, deep focus on the Nordic markets and a commitment to grow the business. Um, and uh, that has so far proven to be um, <laughs> enough. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I have a question from the audience when yep. it comes to the financial details of, of uh, you didn't mention that, but uh, how, uh, when do you think you will be a profitable company? We have set out some targets in the IPO process. Yeah. Uh, I'm currently in um, silent period yeah, because yeah, we yeah. have uh, quarterly results being yeah. announced, so yeah. I cannot speak yeah. to financials today. No, no. I um, but the IPO had uh, ambitions set out uh, in terms of financial targets, and that's what we are striving towards um, yeah. to yeah. Um, to um, become uh, have positive cash flow uh, end of 23. Yeah, but I looked at your last interim report. You had like 35 million or something in your uh, in cash, so you, you you don't need to raise money at the moment, right? No, no. that's not. I on think the table. that's important. That's for, not for on the table at the moment. No, nope. nope. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, 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 and and your burn rate is uh, uh, how much? At the moment? We we can sustain. Uh, yeah. from where we are today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Um, wh when it comes to license new products, I I do you think you will widen the number of of different diseases that you cover? Or, or yes, or, yeah. I think we will see new indications being, let's say, uh, given priority. Uh, okay. What those will be depends on the opportunities yeah. and the loss of exclusivity also for the individual products where we can tap into uh, products that will compete with the originator. So yeah, I do okay. believe that we will see um, other indications or disease areas being opened up. Yeah, sure. Um, wh when you license product, do you license locally? I mean, we are now in in uh, in a very <laughs> R&D heavy industry, I think. Uh, we uh, are certainly looking at and discussing with uh, Nordic players, but the majority of, of uh, opportunities is uh, elsewhere in Europe, I would say. Yeah. So okay. that's where we are looking. Um, our head of business development is, for the same reason, based in Switzerland. Yeah. Uh, in order to broaden the <laughs> network and uh, be more present in Europe than uh, in, in Scandinavia in terms of business development opportunities. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, this, uh, I mean, we have a, a downturn in the economy with inflation and interest rates and, and everything. I think the news is quite bad at the <laughs> moment for everybody. Yeah. Um, how is that affecting you? Is it affecting your, your, your business um, in, in a way, do you think? We are in the lucky situation that we, have, uh, we don't have any debt. No. So uh, we don't need to um, speculate about interest rates. Um, no. We uh, do see um, the challenges in society and so on. Yeah. What I foresee is that there will also be a pressure on medicine spending because society is also needing to find <laughs> ways to balance the bill. Uh, and, and, and that's where we actually see an opportunity for a company like Newberry Pharmaceuticals because we can actually help society bring down the cost of medicine by bringing affordable medicine to market and thereby reduce the spending on medicine, give access to more patients which probably have not been eligible for treatment because costs have been too high. So that's where we see an opportunity where we actually could benefit from a for more strict focus on cost containment in the area of medicine spending for society. Uh, in terms of prices, then uh, many of the products are in tenders and that's where we need to um, control our <laughs> prices and bids and so on to stay profitable, but yeah. that's in our own control, you could say. Uh, of course, we need to negotiate well with our suppliers, and that's what we are doing, yeah. um, but uh, we are not forced upon uh, things from the outside, you could say. No. So I see it more as an opportunity, actually. Yeah, and in the long term, you will see raising sales because of your... your because of the shirt. snowball, so, yeah. 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 The snowball will grow, yeah. and uh, the more products we bring to market, the more sales we will also generate. 
Okay. Um, thank you very much, Lars. We need to move on. Thank uh, you. Time flies. Um, uh, we